This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. Yo. Yeah, I don't have my hat on, everybody. I just want to prove that I have hair on my head. Although I do notice it goes up higher and higher on my forehead every year. Okay, I, uh, I'm not... I, I just went like, whoa, yeah, look at that. I don't look at myself in the mirror too often, so... There you go. What about Valo and Daybell? What about them? Yep, it's an early one today. Got something I gotta be doing later. So. <laughs> Nothing but facts. Nothing but facts. Yeah, so you guys can call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, there's no... Uh, any... Even the popular cases, right? Delphi... You know, Lori and Chad, just not uh, Chris Watts, okay? You'll be immediately banned from the channel. Not interested whatsoever in Chris Watts, never have been. And, uh, you know, I did some videos early on just uh, as it was ro playing out. And then he admitted doing it, and then at that point, there's no more interest. Hey, how's it going? Hey, thanks, Cindy Lean. <laughs> yeah, I do have hair on my head, uh, despite what people think. <laughs> well, thanks, Lynette Burns. Yeah. Great looking, real good. Yeah, I thought I would do an earlier show for people in the, in uh, Europe too. So you guys can call in if you want. You know that number up there works. Yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't. I don't know if I got the email or not. I always keep moving on to different cases, unless there's one that I'm interested in uh, looking at. I didn't get an email on Stella, but I looked it up. I don't think it's going to be um, that serial killer. I don't think he did it. Thanks, haha, -ha, Geo. Greetings uh, from all Chicago. You investigate murders or disappearances? Well, we look into, you know, as well as we can, uh, you know, different murders, missing people, um, cold cases, all, you know, all the time. Hey, thanks, Elaine Tallinn. Yeah, I don't know. Is that what they're saying, that they're turning on each other, Annie? Nice hair dot colon underscore basic boom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't have any emails from anybody with that name, so let me just type in Stella, see if it shows up. No. no. Did you send it to Grayhees2 at gmail dot com? <laughs> oh come on. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Brian Joe. Blazers won last Chewbacca? night. Chewbacca? Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. And even more importantly, my Oregon State Beavers are in the Elite Eight. It's amazing because they wouldn't even have made the NCAA tournament had they not won the Pac-12 tournament. That's an automatic bid 
and now they're in the in the elite eight. It just kind of shows you that um, how close all the teams are in terms of ability. So even if you didn't make this top 64, you're probably pretty good. I know, but uh, this is a call-in show, Andy. Yeah. Yeah, she's probably trying to, um, you know. I think they're both equally guilty in the Daybell case. I think that uh, Chad was more than willing to take part and help her do the things that she did. Because he didn't want to have to deal with any sort of, you know, quote, baggage. <laughs> well, thanks, Lynette Burns. Yeah, the emoji next to your name is uh, Grady Judd, the sheriff. I don't even know what case this you're talking about, This is specifically for the handsome hair. You know, so when you type in a sentence, don't assume people can read your mind. You know, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Do you remember which law enforcement said the scene was a sexual tableau? I cover hundreds of cases, everybody. You know, um, I have no idea what you're referring to, so... Does it say that in the title, K.O.? It can be about whatever you want to talk about. Uh, it doesn't say that in the title, though, but you can talk about Delphi. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I don't only do shows on Delphi, KO. Uh, unlike other YouTubers, all right? I literally cover uh, hundreds and hundreds of cases every year. We did one last night. That one really bothers me a lot. How that one, they haven't even, a, I mean, after 20 years, you'd think they would have just tried for the circumstantial strong case that they have and then you could literally go to trial see if it worked if it w didn't make it it's a hung it'll be a hung jury no matter what i mean likely but if it, if you happen to win then you win you know but at the same time if it's a hung jury you can just say okay so pull the jury maybe try to figure out what it was that they needed and then go try to find that for the next time because you can still be tried again if it's a hung jury I'm not sure if there's even a maximum number. Well, you gotta you gotta always watch the shows. I know they're kind of long, and hey, thank you, Jen H. So kind, so kind. So, anyways, the phone number is up there. Uh, you can call in with any of your theories uh, if you want to call in about Stella. That you mentioned a few minutes ago, that'd be great. I don't have an email related to it. What did you say about uh, Stella? Uh, the other, about, I don't know, a week ago we talked about a, a headless woman in Wyoming that I just randomly, randomly found on newspapers.com. And it turned out that, uh, you know, they buried her without knowing who she was. And then apparently in 1983, they identified her. I think she lived in Nebraska, I, I believe, uh, or Kansas. I can't remember exactly right the, right the second. But, um, but it was never in the paper, so I didn't know. And I called over there to a offer our assistance in maybe doing some genealogy. They might have to exhume her, uh, her body and everything but it turns out when I called back again the guy goes why would you have to exhume her we know who it is and they uh, identify her name is Stella and then uh, I can't remember the last name right this second but they they say that Henry Lee Lucas is the killer and I went oh god I, I just think you know Henry Lee Lucas was a clearinghouse for murders it was all these unsolved cases that people wanted to get off the books, the Texas Rangers apparently would sit down with Henry Lee Lucas, fill him in on all the details. Then when the sheriff departments from the different locations would come in, 
boy, he sounded like he knew everything that only the killer would know. I think Henry Lee Lucas maybe killed one person. Uh, I, I really, give me some proof that he killed anybody more than that. All right, so hold on a second. I gotta get this phone. All right, uh, 443, you're on. Hey, what's going on? Who's this? Jesus Santiago. All right, Santiago. There you go. How you doing tonight? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. What's going on with you? You gonna got hey, much? Um, I was calling to see if uh, I don't know if this case actually makes national news or not, but this just happened Monday, right here by where I live at. This girl went to a, out to drink with her friends. It was her birthday Monday night. They went out celebrating. And around 3 o'clock, all of her friends didn't know where she had went to. And the next day, her parents or whatever, they reported her missing. There was a big search and everything going on for her. And they got a call that night around 3 o'clock or 3.30 in the morning to the police that there was some kind of altercation going on right there by Cannes Square. They could hear somebody arguing and fighting their stuff. Well... The police took an hour to come and investigate it. The mayor's doing some kind of investigation into the police or whatnot about them not following procedure, will come in and check out what was going on. But long story short, the next day they found her body in the water. They're saying, oh, she may have fell into the water, but the homicide detectives are investigating the case. I don't know, you know what I mean? Have you heard anything about that case? I haven't. Uh, is this the one that the girl that they found floating in the water? Yeah, her name's uh, yeah. Clara Payne. Yeah, well, this is sort of like the missing men of Boston. You know, they have this thing in Boston, but that does happen where they're having a few drinks. They're walking around on, like, near a pier. They fall in, but, you know, you kind of wonder, like, why were they by themselves? Or What what are you thinking? Exactly. Now? You know? I, what that area, dude, it's very strange, man. Like, there's a lot of vagrants of hang out around there there's a lot of weird people to walk the streets right there in that area and at night time there's actually been a lot of murders that's been going on right in that area Canton that part of Canton they try to make it seem like it's a better na better neighborhood a better area you know they got a lot of bars a lot of restaurants and stuff but it's really not because the people in the inner city they target them areas particularly knowing that there's going to be upper class people in that area and they try to target it, you know? Mm. Yeah. And the phone call that night to the police stating that they heard the argument or whatever going on there and the police taking an hour to come investigate it and then by the time they got there, there was nobody there. But then they find the body right there in the water by where she was, by where they was arguing. I mean... Okay, so she, she was like arguing with somebody. Right, is that a yeah, fact so or is it just story. people reported hearing an argument? That, that's exactly somebody reported hearing an argument. Mm. They didn't know that it was her or not, but they they heard the altercation. They thought it was behind one of the restaurants. They couldn't actually see him. They just heard mm. them arguing and fighting. And but, well, when you say the them, police. well, see, when you say them, though, it's like that's implying. I mean, there, a lot of times when you're at bars, there's arguments and, you know, yelling all the time. Oh, no, they wasn't at the bar no more. This was... Uh, a couple yeah. blocks away. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, like, but people leaving bars are like, you know, hey, you were talking to so and so, you mess, or they're just yelling because they're when they're drunk. You know how you yell loud. I don't know what makes people right. think that that was them that were the ones that were arguing, like her and somebody else. Is the there priest any? was empty. They don't know for sure it was it was her. Like I said, they 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 have reports that they believe that it was her from. Mm -hmm. um, our caller that called in the streets was empty the bars closed there at like 2 o'clock yeah. so about 3.30 4 o'clock the streets are pretty much cleared but well, what was she doing they, for two, an hour and a half though I mean whoever was yelling I, could, I mean it's like uh, well how do they know when she left the bar did she leave by herself is that reported that's what her friends say that they don't know actually they just know that she was there and then she wasn't mm. and she was gone they didn't know where she went to or who she left with. 
They just knew that she was gone. Hmm. And then they hear her arguing, but it, it it's weird that, and the argument was at 3.30, that's an hour and a half after the bar closed, so what would you be doing for that hour and a half? Right. And was it some, was she with somebody that she knew? Did she leave the bar with somebody that she knew? Right. It's, a, it's a weird case. I hope that they dig more into it, but police in here, man, is, it's, it's messed up, really, is. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Well, I mean, if there was an argument, and then there probably is, if, and that was her, then there's probably more likely another reason she ended up in the water. Exactly. And it's yeah. pretty, if you're from here, it's pretty hard to end up in the harbor water, dude. Like, I mean, you're not just going to walk off into the water. I mean, I mean, I guess it's possible, but it's very unlikely. Yeah. Very unlikely. Hmm. And what would you be doing down behind the restaurant? Oh, there's nothing open. And this is like a dark area. This is a strange area. Why would a 26 year old co be hanging out behind the dark? Okay, so you're saying, that you're, saying, you're saying the argument. What you know what the name of the restaurant is? Let's go look it up. What is it? Uh, I'm not sure the name. the The area is, is Canton Square. There's a bunch of how do you spell how do you spell along that? there? C A N T O N. Okay. Canton Square. And this is in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. It's kind of like a bit like you. You can see it's just a square, and the water is right there, and then. There's like a little From side street, almost like a bike path, that goes behind like these restaurants. Okay, it's called Canton Square, though? Okay. Yep, Canton Square. Is it right next to a, uh, how come I've already got, oh, never mind. It's right next to the water, though, you're saying? Yep, it's right next to the water. Hmm, do you know what the, oh wait, let me, let me look, the, what's her name again? Tara Payne. Tara Savannah Payne. Okay, I think somebody sent me that one. At one point. But once they found her, I was like, eh. So Tara... And then Payne, like P-A-N-E. Is that what you said? P-A-Y-N-E, I think. Oh, Payne. Let's see. Yeah, no, nothing shows up. I mean, okay. Tara, T E. Uh, wait, let me. Let me okay, it did say. Did you mean? Let me see. Yeah, nothing's showing up. Or, or can you just spell the whole thing slowly? What you're saying? Oh, uh, what Tara Payne? Yeah, T E R A or two R's or what? T A R A. Okay. Oh, Tara, like that. Okay. T A Y N E. Okay, that probably will work. Tara Payne. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I remember looking at this one. This exact uh, thing. So let's see what we have here. The 1200 block. A heartbreaking block update in the search for a woman missing in Baltimore. Police. Oxide Circle. 1200. Okay. All right, so yeah, it's sort of... It kind of goes out towards the water at that point. It's like a pier, kind of. Yep. And then... See the little side street right over there? You're right there. It's over behind that big building. Okay, right over here? The big building right on the top of the screen. It's like right up in that area, yeah, kind of like in that area. Okay, so, Pretty back, sure. so back here, maybe? Yep. No, well, there's actually... No, that's not it. Okay, well, just you—you you can see it on on our Zoom chat where yeah, I'm live. I'm we're live. Your screen. Yeah, we're live. So, um, I mean, that's right on time. So, when I'm moving my mouse around, you can you can see it. Okay, so where where right. are you looking at? Is this the place they were at? This restaurant here, or this thing? Or? That 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 one. It looks so weird from the sky view. Okay, well, if I went over it's here, right around that area. Okay. Well, there's a, definitely a restaurant right back here, if that's where they were. Yeah, and um, it's 
it just, it just don't look that's it's possible it, it might be it there's two places right there man in that same area mm-hmm. it kind of looked the same it's fellas point yeah let me i'm just looking it up here let me find a different it looks so good. i'm gonna do like daily mail i, mean, I had to look it up one my other device to see exactly where it was at but like I said, it's that's not it. It's let me look it up real quick. I think they're gonna have p- p- Daily Mail always has it's a lot a, of reference. It's, a, it's a big square. It's an empty space. It's got like little benches that are around, and there's like a little spot where the water is, and the water taxi comes to. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a name of the bar. Southern Provisions Bar. Which is actually here is where the bar that they were at. It says, prior to her disappearance, Payne was seen emerging from the Southern Provisions Bar on O'Donnell Street. So that's this bar. Right. So it was pretty far away. Yeah. Doesn't make a lot of sense. However, you there's said you safe, heard... There's a safe way and stuff right there where, where the Canton Square is. There's a safe way. Um... Oh, the Ray Lewis restaurant is right in that King Square, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just up above now again. I just want to check this out. So Payne's aunt said her car was found where she had parked it in the Boston Street. A friend of Payne. Show me pictures that match. What was that? You got a map? I'm going to get the exact address right now. The case is being investigated by Baltimore. Wait, Wait is that it? No, it's not. Wait. Judge me. God, Judge Judy has a big mansion. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at this damn thing, you guys. Holy yeah, crap, it's man. Crazy. She, le- she has a mansion and it's got a, a lake on it. <laughs> yep. Wow. <laughs> so, TV judges make more money than the real judges. Canton neighborhood. Uh, divers recovered Payne's body off of the Canton neighborhood. Doesn't say exactly, but it did say the block address, so it was right around in this area. So anyway, she was recovered over here, and she left this bar over here. And then an hour and a half later, there was some some people heard some yelling or something back over here. Was it over here? I that just see it. It's Canton Park. That right there is where the uh pretty sure Canton Square is at it. Uh, Boston would, I just Street. seen it on the screen. Well, this is Boston Street Pier Park. Okay. Yeah. That it was... Can you... Oh, fuck. I can go down the street view here. Is that... Are you... Can you do, just go back to your... Uh, go up higher again? Okay, yeah. Yep, that right there is where the Safeway and stuff is. So, yeah, it's right around that area. Oh, maybe that's Safeway that's right cool. here. Yeah. Yep, Safeway. Yep. Safeway. Okay, so yeah, it might be right next to this park then. Let me see if we exactly. Can... See where right there to the right where the circle is. This this thing. Nope. Go up to the right. Go to your right. No, to the right. Move the screen over to the right. I am. I was going to the right. What What are you talking about? The whole screen. It, it's not in that that little area. It's another little spot over. Keep going. Okay, over here, this direction. The same direction you were just moving, yes. Okay. Keep keep going. Oh, See, right the there circle. where that circle is. Yeah. Okay, that's... That park, yep. Okay, but she wasn't found in the park. She was found in the water, right? It, but that's, that's, where the, that's where the square's at. So she walked down that way and towards the water, yeah. So what does this square have to do with it? That's where they call it Canton Square. It's like a, a square where there's a bunch of restaurants and bars and stuff. They don't like to put out any bad information. That's why it's so hard to find exactly where it was at because mm-hmm. they don't like to put out any bad information about there because that's one of our biggest okay. like, tourist attractions, the Inner Harbor and Canton. They try to make that place seem so peaceful. And well, you can see it right here. Area. So let's see if we can try to figure out there's these big pillars in the background right there. So let's see. Right, right. Let me see if um, those don't seem like let me go down to 
right here and just see if I can see something. But you see how that little walkway goes all the way around the water? That goes around the entire inner harbor like that. I think she was found right over here in this uh, location. Yeah. Somewhere around in here because look at the... Uh, see how in this picture right here yep. you've got the big white poles where the... And I think that's what those are. These, these white poles. I bet you they were kind of like out on one of these i think that's what these are right there yeah it's possible they was out on one of them dock. but see that it goes all the way around the inner harbor and they're all i mean it's probably what uh it goes all the way around that inner harbor right but i think she see was found right there. here because i was looking around i didn't see the same white poles over here the only place that had those those white poles well let, let me try one more time i'll go over here Let's just see what these guys have. Yeah, see, these are blue. See that? These are all right. blue poles. And so when you look at that picture where they pulled her out of the water, it seems to be right White here. Poles. And that's actually the same address. Remember, this is right where the the um, the block address was given. So it was right there. I think that's right. where they pulled her out of the water. Now, I guess it could be over here. Let's go over here and look. It's possible, like I said, and that right there could be where they was arguing that too. Oh well, here we go. It could be anywhere around here too. So where did they say they heard the arguing? There you go. Some white poles right there, you know. Yeah. So it could be this um, here or anywhere back here because it had that same address exactly right back here. So this whole pier area. Where did they say they heard the arguing going on? Behind one of the restaurants. They was in a parking lot and they heard it behind one of the restaurants. Like so maybe one of them little red trails that go along the water. Okay, so this is a restaurant right here, right? That's what this is. Yep. I just looked. Yep. So what if they got in an argument back here and then boom and she was found in the same look at all these boats underwater here. Jesus. Yep. <laughs> anyway, anyways, uh Dude, this is crazy. She could have been found right inside this marina right here and this is maybe the restaurant there was the argument and if that's where she was found then you know you might associate the argument with her being in the water it's hard to exactly. absolutely make uh, that assumption you'd have to find her on camera kind of walking around in the area or something like that because see they before they even found her in the water the guy had made the claim he said you know Around that time, I heard people arguing in this area, and I called the police and made the report. And then the next day, they found the body. So it, it, he already thought that something could have happened to her in that area, and then he made the claim. I heard somebody arguing, and then the next day, they find a body right there around where he said that he heard the arguing coming from. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. I don't know, it's just a big coincidence, you know? Well, it makes it more suspicious because where, where was she? Exactly. Where was her? Where was her car parked? I have no idea. They, they there was the news coverage was like two and a half minutes long. Okay. They didn't say much. In it, uh, parked it on Boston Street, and her purse was still inside. So her car was parked on a Boston Street with her purse still inside of it. She probably didn't go in the bar with her purse. A lot of times, women will leave right. their purse in the car, just take their ID and a card. So, yep. You know, but I I think that she was she was lured out of there by somebody else, or she was with a friend. He was like, "Oh yeah, we're going to go walk along the water," or yeah, who knows? They could have been doing drugs. They could have anything's possible. Well, it's weird that she found so. Like, I would like to know where her car was parked to see if it even made any sense that. For her to walk that direction. Right, exactly. like if the car was parked anywhere north of that vehicle or north or east of the restaurant. Uh, if the car well, was parked north or east, parked of that, that, if it was parked north or east of that restaurant, I'd be suspicious. I'd be more suspicious. If her car happened to be over here towards the square, then it's kind of, you know, who knows, you know. Right. Did she walk over there? I think the car was parked on Boston Street. Is that what you read? What's that? 
Did you say that you've seen that car was parked on Boston Street? No, it's... Oh, it did say that. It did say that. Let me type that in. I thought it said a Boston Street. Well, right there Street. where your pointer's at, I'm pretty sure that's Boston Street. I thought it said on right there, Boston Street. Street. Okay, hold on, hold on a second. Oh wow! So that's that is this street right here. So she could have been yep, parked. Been. She could have just been parked down here, walked over to that bar, and then came back, and then maybe I mean, ah, it's weird. Yeah. But she could have also but been parked anywhere. Of, they could have been bar hopping. There's a lot of bars yeah. going all the way through that strip. They could have just ended up at Provisions. You know what I mean? The last bar they was in together. They might have been bar hopping. Mm-hmm. What do you when you say provisions? That that's the name of the first bar. Yeah, wow. that's the name of the bar they said that they was in when yeah she went missing. Right. Provisions. So she was last seen emerging what? from the bar and kitchen at one thirty. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Uh, it's hard to. And that's around the time the last call would be because. They usually want to have everybody out from two o'clock. Yeah, it's crazy. Huh. Well, we might have to look into this a little bit more. You know, see what's going on. Exactly. That's why I called you. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. So if anybody will try to get to the bottom of it, you'd be the one. Yeah. Let me see. Let me get her name. I'm going to make a folder really quick. Savannah... Or Tara Savannah Payne. They, she went by Savannah. They all called her Savannah. But her name was Tara Savannah, yeah. Gray would love to get your opinion on the court and stuffer case or any of the multiple cases in Center County, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I don't know if I've done that one. Courtney Stoffer. Uh... Okay, I'm going to move this up to the, the folder, just so I have it. So maybe I'll look at it in the next day or so, see, what, see what's going on. That's what's up. All right, cool. All right, cool. well, I just wanted to put your D on it and <laughs> get your eye on it. All right, well, you opened my eyes a little bit. I didn't realize there was a some there was an argument around that time. So. Yeah, you can see that in the news conference. See, they talk about that. Okay. But... I appreciate it, man. Everybody, I hope you guys have a good night and enjoy the show. Yeah, you too. And if you if you have a link, uh, why don't you email me that press conference? I'll, everything, anything I get, I'll email it to you. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, All right buddy. Have a good one. Let's see. All right, Santiago. Uh, the Courtney Stauffer. I don't know if I've ever done that one. Is that a missing person? Or... Let me type it in. Yeah. There's, good, there's noise in the background here because my wife's cooking. So. <laughs> no, so it's a disappearance. Have I done this one? No. Well, call in, you guys. My God, you, you, you know you can call in about anything. And thank you guys for the super chats. If you're new here, what we what I do, you know, the mo when you guys send in super chats, it supports two things: my channel and the charities that we do at the end of the month okay so uh, this so far this year we've donated eight thousand dollars however six thousand of that was put into a fund um, for genetic genealogy work uh, with colleen fitzpatrick so we're going to keep building that up i want to get that to fifteen thousand and then uh, i'm hoping this year Beats last year. We donated twenty four uh, twenty two thousand and then two uh, and then so far this year it's eighty six hundred. But last year we uh, did twenty two. I want to try to do thirty this year. 
So there you go. The, the ad revenue. Uh, see, a lot of people think like the ad revenue. Oh, you make millions. The ad revenue on YouTube is a joke unless you're one of the really large channels that put out reg just the videos. Okay, like if you get 50,000 views or 100,000 views a video, you can make decent uh, money. My channel, though, the, I do three-hour shows basically every single night, and therefore only, you know, sometimes 2,000, sometimes 10, 20, depending on whatever the case is. But normally it's like 2,000 views or something because most people don't want to spend three hours watching a video, okay? Uh, a lot of people just don't have the attention span nor the time, and, you know, it's just sort of like... But thankfully, there's a huge number of freaks like myself that want to take the time and go over cases slowly and figure stuff out. Yeah, well, I just explain myself for people because there's a lot of people that they're never really quite sure. But every single time I donate money, I put it on the, sh the, the screen and show the receipt that comes into my email account, you know. And the reason I do that is because there's a lot of troll idiots out there who always say, Oh, well, how do we know? Okay, well, yeah. I, I mean, I understand that in some aspects, but it's sort of the anger people that get angry about it. They don't have a clue what they're talking about. Thanks, Chrissy. So anyways, uh, the lines are open. You can call in about whatever case you want to talk about. Or I'm just looking at this one that was just mentioned on the Super Chat. I guess we could just, let me just read what it says here. This is July 29th, 2020. Wednesday marked eight years since Courtney Stauffer was reported missing from her Main Street apartment in Palmyra, seemingly gone without a trace. The family used the anniversary to use a page it established on Facebook titled Courtney Stauffer, Remember Me, with updated contact information for private investigator Leah Hopewell. Wendy Stauffer Hamill stopped by her daughter's Main Street apartment on July 29, 2012, after the 21 year old failed to meet family at the Lebanon area fair. She found Stauffer's dog barking, the television on, and air conditioner running. Her daughter's keys and phone were there, but there was no sign of Stauffer. Okay, she found Salfer's dog barking, the television on, and the air conditioning running, her daughter's keys and phone. So it's almost like she was just abducted from her house. Hamill told Penn Live last July it was the worst day of her life. She was a new she was new at being twenty one, a free spirit, life of the party and fun loving. It sounds like somebody like came to her door that she might have even known while she was watching television. And it was probably a warm night, air conditioner on, and immediately was forced out of the, just based on that information right there. Of course, I have very little information other than what I've just read. Investigators have re received a variety of leads over the years, but none have led to Stauffer. She would be 29 years old at this point. Tension was building between Stauffer and her downstairs neighbors, okay, late July 28th and early the next morning. Her boyfriend Brad Herr was living with her and not supposed to be drinking because he was on house arrest, authorities said. But that night, he drank some beer with Stauffer and her friends, um, and her friends and her, and, uh, uh, Stauffer and her friends, and got arrested when the neighbors called the police. So the neighbors called the police. He got arrested because he wasn't supposed to be drinking. Stauffer and her friends went out in Harrisburg and confronted the neighbors. When they came back, 
at around 3 a.m. Hmm. But that night, he drank some beer with Stauffer and her friends and yeah, drank some beer with Stauffer and her friends and got arrested when the neighbors called the police. Stauffer and her friends went out in Harrisburg and confronted the neighbors. I don't really understand what that means. What do you mean you went out and then confronted them when they came back? Well, that's at your your own house. You live upstairs, you know. Let's see. Tension was building between Stauffer and her downstairs neighbors. So, yeah. On late July 29th and early the next morning. And then her boyfriend, Brad, wasn't, wasn't supposed to be drinking because he was on house arrest. But that, that night, he drank some beer with Stauffer, the woman that's missing, and her friends... Uh, drank uh, beer with Stauffer and her friends and got arrested when the neighbors called the police. So the downstairs neighbor called the police and said, hey, and then police came over. He wasn't supposed to be drinking. He got arrested. And then Stauffer and her, those same, some other friends, I guess, went out in Harrisburg and confronted the neighbors when they came back. So what, is that, what does that even mean? Okay, I get it. I get what they're saying now. Jesus. <laughs> it's such a poorly written article, the way they... It's a bad story. She right. went to yeah. a bar and came back to her I, apartment I can see it and now. confronted the neighbors. Dalfour and her friends went out in Harrisburg and confronted the neighbors when they came back at around 3 a.m. So it, you don't even need to... You know, the way they worded this was ri ridiculous. They just need to say that they w she went out with some friends, and then later on, when she got back home, she, they confronted the neighbors at around 3 a.m. The police were called again, but no one answered at Stauffer's or the neighbor's apartment. Stauffer was nowhere to be found when one of her friends woke her up, uh, woke up in her apartment around 7.30 a.m. Stauffer and her friends went out in Harrisburg. Okay, so the police were called again, but no one answered. So the, who called the police this time? The neighbors downstairs? Called again, but no one answered at Stauffer's or the neighbor's apartment. So they weren't around when the police called back. Stauffer was nowhere to be found when one of her friends woke up in the apartment at 7.30. So she went missing between 3 a.m. and 7.30 a.m., a four and a half hour window there. In an interview with Penn Live, Hamill said all the individuals involved that night were interviewed. They all know how the night unfolded, she said. She hadn't talked to her daughter since she called on July 28th to tell her that her was arrested. <laughs> okay. uh, about two years after her disappearance, a friend of Courtney told her father, Scott, I don't know who her, what this is right there. Was there somebody else named her earlier? Okay, Brad, her. Tension as the building, okay, 28, her boyfriend Brad Hur was living with her and not supposed to be drinking. Okay, we got that. In an interview with Penn Live, she hasn't talked to her daughter since she called on July 28th to tell her that her was arrested. Okay, so she called her mom and said, hey, you know, my boyfriend was arrested because he wasn't supposed to be drinking, and the neighbors downstairs called it in. About two years after her disappearance, a friend of Courtney's told her father, Scott Stauffer, that his daughter's body... Okay, about two years after her disappearance, a friend of Courtney's told her father, Scott Stauffer, that his daughter's body was thrown into Memorial Lake about 12 miles from where Stauffer, Stauffer was last seen. So why, why would a friend of Courtney's say that two years later? 
Investigators searched the lake, but the woman's body was never found. Her parents haven't given up hope, although investigators admit the likelihood of her being found alive goes down as time passes. Well, it's almost zero chance. Hamill and Scott Stauffer did not return messages on Wednesday requesting comment. I don't know. I mean, there's probably a lot, a lot of little details that are out there. Sounds like something happened with the neighbor. Why would one of her friends kill her? And why didn't the neighbors downstairs answer the phone after they called police and then the police called back but nobody answered? Okay, so it sounds like they were almost gone at that point. There might have been a fight and maybe she accidentally got killed or something. You know, maybe it didn't mean to be killed like they just beat her up. But how come none of her other friends that were there with her have any idea of what happened? Yep. Hey, Salty, how do you keep coming back? I keep blocking your account, but you keep coming back. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> it was a guy friend that spent the night. Okay, but what about the other friends, though? Remember, they came back. They were there, too, right away at the beginning. Hmm. So it was a guy friend, huh? Well, I don't know anything about the case. I'm just looking at it right now. Well, one of the, the guy that woke, there was a guy there that woke up at 7.30. How did he not know what happened? I guess they all just, they drank a lot. Okay, they left, but why was he, he was still there. Why did he stay there? Did, were they, was he romantically interested in her? Even though her boyfriend was in jail at the time? Yeah. It'd be interesting to know about the neighbor. Here, let me let me check something out. No, this is the other one. What was this case now? Oh, I'm gonna have to go up. Courtney Stauffer. And that's in Pennsylvania. Let's see what it's saying here. It will be a year this week weekend that Courtney Stauffer disappeared from her Palmyra apartment. And although she remains lost, investigators and her family say she is not forgotten. Stauffer went missing after spending a night out with friends July 28th in Harrisburg, where she reportedly got into a fight inside the former hardware bar. She returned to her apartment early the next morning with a male friend. Okay. Interesting. Because her boyfriend was in... So she only came back with that one friend, it sounds like. There was another argument with neighbors, and police were twice called to her home. When her, So this is the day after another argument, though. Uh, when her friend woke up the next morning, he said Stauffer was gone. She had not been seen since. There's a lot of emptiness 
in the family because she hasn't been here for a lot of family events. Her family would have celebrated Courtney's 22nd birthday in April, but after a year of grief, a national TV appearance, and search parties, they are no closer to finding her. Stan, it stands about where it has for some period of time. I'm not sure what they're referring to. Oh, the case. Uh, hmm. Let me try the next uh, year here, see what's going on. And now they're checking that lake because that's after the friend had called. State police began searching Lebanon County Lake Tuesday for the body of Courtney Stauffer. A four-member boat crew used sonar device. The search with the cadaver dog in the morning also yielded no results. So that's the that attempt. And now they want uh, there's a petition to search the lake. So that was just prior to that. Let's see in 2015. We need like a an article that's got all of the information. Nope, there goes blue. All right, let's see what it says here. Courtney Stauffer was 21 years old when she went missing from the Palmyra home on July 29, 2012. She spent the previous night out with friends in Harrisburg and vanished after returning to her apartment on Main Street early the next morning. Her purse, phone, and keys were found in the apartment, and her car was still parked outside. So it's almost like she was outside in a fight. Something happened to her, then she was dumped somewhere. Because everything, it's like, you know, the TV was on. I mean, it's interesting that the TV was on because if they came home and they just immediately started arguing with the neighbors, you know, at what point was the TV on? Did it, everything cool down for a while? Then she started watching TV. I don't know. Her purse, phone, and keys were found in the apartment, and her car was still parked outside. Palmyra police have said they were at the apartment three times in the hours before, wow, they were the, the police were there three different times in the hours before Stauffer's disappearance. Officers cited two men for underage drinking on the night of July 28th and returned twice the next morning to investigate noise complaints from her downstairs neighbors. No one answered the door during the final visit. So why didn't the boyfriend, or you know, the the male guest answered the phone. He was just passed out. Investigators say they continued. To, how, do, how does anybody even know that the that he was even there? And this whole part about oh the you know uh, the TV was on and and all this stuff. Who's saying that? How do you know? I mean, if, if he was still there at 7.30 in the morning, he what did he say? Oh, when I woke up, the TV was on. Or... Hmm. Kind of a weird story, isn't it? Uh, not, not a lot of uh, articles out there. He tried to keep it quiet so she wouldn't be arrested. So she was really antagonizing the neighbors then, right? On purpose. No, I don't. I don't watch Kendall or anything. 
Yeah. I, I'm only talking about it because somebody mentioned it above. I don't need to go watch it, Darlene. Thanks. I'm not. I'm not that. You know. I don't. I don't like doing the cases that everybody else has covered. All right. So when people come in and they go, "Hey, do this one," I don't have time to see it. But you then you go look and there's like eighty-seven thousand videos and you know, if Kendall Ray covered it. Um, af, you know, before I did, I probably don't need to talk about it, okay? Because that means she got it, a million people to see it. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Ah, she's just a YouTuber. She does true crime. She doesn't really have all the facts all the time. It's all it's a lot of speculation, but she's got like a million. Over a million subscribers, so you know she's one of the people that can make a lot of money on ad revenue. Yeah, it's been covered a lot. Yeah, so I'm not really you know. It sounds like it's just one of those ones where you can speculate all day long, but there's not a lot of you know. Sounds like it it's most likely has something to do with the neighbors. But you also have the guy that was there apparently not answering the phone or, you know, when the door's being knocked on. All right, Sabina. So anyways, this is for you guys to call in. I'm going to go ahead and... I uh, just sit here until somebody calls in. Not a soul, not a soul. <laughs> well, the thing is, I'm doing a show for a live call-in show. If you don't want to, if nobody's calling in, I'm just going to go do something else, all right? I'm doing the show so that people can call in and talk about the different cases that we've talked about. You can call in about the Delphi case. You can call in about anything you want to talk about. I just don't feel like uh, sitting here, um, you know, I can go ramble on for hours about anything, you know? Anybody can do that. Well, not Gray anybody. wave, surfer. Uh, thank you, Rochelle Black and Lee D. <laughs> yeah, anybody can call in if you want to. Okay. Look, I even have on the screen right now the Delphi case. Ooh, wow, that'll get some... Oh, now it's interesting. Uh, okay. Nothing else is interesting, everybody. Just that one case. That's all... Any, there's so many people, that's all they like to talk about. I can talk about it all day long because I know it. I followed it. It's the one I want to it solved more than anything else.
<laughs> All right. Well, I hope you feel better there, Zozo. Thanks, Chrissy. Can't see. Oh, you can't see it on this one. Oh. Here, I'll go over to this one. There you go. How about that one? Awesome. Thanks, Jackie. <laughs> I know, there really isn't a lot. We can all sit here and theorize all day long. I mean, to me, it's kind of been in the same position for a long time. I mean, I know there's people out there that, you know, they're interested in, like, what some of these people are saying. Like, Lee Kerr, you know, somebody that came out with all these comments pret uh, pretending that they were an insider and now the new one is that, the, is that the insider accidentally forgot to switch their name and started talking the truth and then realized it and then switched back and so maybe it really was and that somebody you know there's a whole, all kinds of stuff alright 919 you're on Chrissy. Chrissy. How's it going? Good. Sorry, I couldn't see the oh, password yeah. and I didn't feel my glasses, so... Well, I guess that makes sense. I appreciate... I don't make sense? No, I said I guess that makes sense. You couldn't see oh, it. Okay. Nobody, nobody could like, see what? it. That's why nobody called. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I do have a, a case that I'm just curious... Um, I'm not sure if you have an opinion on it, but it happened in my hometown. So um, the Faith Hedge Pets case from Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. Chapel Hill, North Carolina? Or? North Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. It's still unsolved. Um, and it's, she was a college student at UNC. What was her name again? Faith Hedgepeth, H-E-D-G-E-P-E-T-H. -E -E and what year was that? Uh, oh, yikes. Yeah, let's see. 2000, I think 2009? <laughs> okay. Um, that, wow, that would make it really old, wouldn't it? Not really. It makes me... It is. 2009 seems like it was yesterday. I don't know. You're probably pretty really? young. You're probably pretty young, right? I'll let you. I'll let you think that. Well, the thing is, the older you get, the quicker time goes by. That's the sad part. It'd be Ooh, great. If, it'd be great that's if it like was, a tattoo. I want to get now. Well, it's true though. It's um, my mom came up with a good theory as to why. She said that the it's a percentage of your life. So you know, like the first years, when, up until you're like seven or eight, nine, ten, eleven, those years took forever. I mean, it was like. I mean, it just it trudged on and on and on. But now, a week seems like a day. It just, you know, gone, 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 gone. You know, it's, cr it's crazy. That is so true. Wow, that's deep. I've never thought about it like that. <laughs> that's deep, man. Miss, Miss, Mrs. Gray Hughes. Wait a minute. Mama Hughes. There we go. All right, let me see if <laughs> I can find one this. Yeah, I don't see it in that one. Let's see. Is she a missing person or what is she? She's uh she was murdered with a they they believe it's a Bacardi rum bottle. It's a very strange case all around, but um it it seems odd that there hasn't been any resolution um and the police which, you know, the police had no problem busting up my part, like the parties I would be at in high school and stuff. And, you know, they were around all the time, but there's no resolution in this case. Kind of ticks me off. I ran from that, from them all the time. I'm like, come on, guys. Let's reassess our priorities here. Yeah. 
Well, that case from last night makes me angry. I don't know if you heard that one or not. But. About about the police point blank period? No, just last night's case where they just completely... They have, it seems like they have enough information to have an arrest on to, in that case. It's yep. to me, anyway. For, uh, even to go to court. I think you can go to trial with uh, the information that they have. Yeah, and it makes, I mean, I feel like when you get to that point, too, it's like you could, some people opt to go like that, the civil route if they just want to push it so it's taken up criminally as well. I know it's not super popular, but it's at least a way to put pressure on, you know, the people that should have taken it in front of a jury to begin with. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I can't get this uh, <laughs> stuff's not working on screen. But well, tell us about the case, though, that you remember. Okay. Let's see. So, um, Faith and her roommate Karina Rosario were living in like in an apartment together. They would go out um, pretty regularly. They decided to go out to a bar uh, one evening. They are seen on surveillance footage getting into um, a cab and they return, were returning to their apartment. The roommate left wanted to leave the bar saying she didn't feel good uh, and then she left the house the apartment at um, like 4 or 4 30 in the morning when a male companion I guess picked her up and brought her to his home um, the next morning their mutual friend uh, came over or was picking up Karina brought her back to the apartment where Faith was, and Karina said she had left the door unlocked, and so they just walked right in, and they found her beaten, and um, she was deceased, and she was in a position that looked like she had been assaulted, um, and there was a note written on a bag from, um, it's a place around here is over 24 hours that you can get uh, food when you're drunk. It's uh, t- called Time Out. And it said um, bitch and you jealous or something on it. Like, so it was very strange. Um, but the it, I guess they found some some male DNA and some female DNA um, I think it was in September of 2012. Is it 2012? Yeah. Okay. Right, I so knew that was a, she was the same age as my sister. I just didn't know that. Uh, yeah, I just I can't I couldn't think of any male that would ever write "bitch, you jealous" or something like that ever, uh, ev- ever. No, that like, doesn't sound like it. And leave it there. It just seems very odd to me but um you know just leaving the door unlocked with your roommate asleep in an apartment anywhere i don't care if it's like pleasantville it just seems really strange as does being picked up at four something in the morning to return at nine thirty or whatever um and she has since kind of gone off the grid um and yeah so i was just curious if you were looking for case suggestions. No. Uh, well, that's a, that's an interesting one. I mean, I could look at it. I, I'm putting in those in a folder that I have. Yeah. So definitely take a look at and it. And I just, I love to talk to you as, I mean, as always, as a bonus. So, win, <laughs> win, win. <laughs> oh, it's cool. So, time isn't going by yeah, for you quicker? Time has stood still for like a while for me, but... Um, but I think, you know, I'm hoping that that changes soon, I guess, 
<laughs> yeah, we got to get those shots. What? What shocks? Shots. Like Nike uh, shocks? No, shots in our arms, so we, everything's oh. back to normal again. <laughs> oh, I was like, what? Nike? What the heck? Yeah. Um, my, yeah, my, uh, the fiance's, uh, my, my, my mother-in-law, uh, I, I call her, she, uh, she had hers because she's a uh, NICU, uh, nurse and she, she got a little sick after her second one, which is really rare for, for her to be sick ever. But, uh, she said it wasn't anything that was too bad. So she's. Um, now she's feeling a little bit better about getting out and doing stuff. So, um, I told her that if, you know, that I would try it when it was allowed for me or whatever. I don't know when, when that will be, but I thought they had like a kind of a hierarchy or something of the people they wanted to do first. Well, it's weird because, um, you know, my state, other than it being a beautiful physically like a state with uh it's just a it's led by a bunch of jokers i mean just a joke of a of a state so we don't our shots like everybody else around us every state around us has they're already opening up their shots to everybody like soon and our governor is like well maybe may 1st but you know maybe later we'll see it's, well what the <laughs> hell is that the, but what is that that's just she's an idiot okay our, everybody that runs yep. my state is um, the, the mayor, the governor. Every single person is just incapable of doing anything. It's really sick. Yeah, so. I mean, especially when you hear the stories about like pharmacists, like the pharmacists that tampered with them. I would just say, as soon as we get it, let's just distribute them ASAP. You know, like let's not keep them on the shelves too long because mm -hmm. people are crazy yeah but yeah i i will like post i guess everybody's posting pictures when they get them so um i guess that's a what, trendy what's, what's thing weird to do is, nowadays what's, what's weird is um, there's a lot of see there's there's two things that are kind of weird is pe some people don't take the shot because uh when you know trump was making you know getting all the vaccines approved uh, like CNN, MSNBC, and the like would say, oh, we're not taking, even Kamala Harris, I'm not going to take it if it's a vaccine created under Trump. Well, it turns out, well, that's what the vaccines are that everybody's using. And so, and, that, and then people on the right are the conspiracy wackos that think that there's some kind of nanobot inside of the shot or some kind of a, a zombie creating deal. And so it's just a lot of <laughs> absolute nonsense, everybody. They're, right now, they haven't found any deaths associated with the vaccines. However, people have died after they've taken the vaccine. And you know why they've died? Because For, from a, lot other of, things, a lot of people right? die. Oh, here, here's the thing. Um, you're giving the shot to people that were 75 and older first, right? So that was millions of people that are 75 and older, and there's a, a percentage of those people that die every single day because they're old and they're, they have other medical issues. So when they get the shot, and then a week later they die of something, oh my God, it was a shot that did it. It had nothing to do with it, okay? Absolutely nothing to do with it. And so that's what it looks like. Yes. Now, when, once you start giving shots to a population of between 25 and 45, if you start getting a ramp up of deaths right after that, uh, then I, I'll be like, hmm, that's interesting. But if it's the same level of deaths, then I, it just doesn't mean a damn thing. So it's weird how all these people out there are paranoid over something because there's a couple wackos that tell they, These are absolutely safe vaccines to take, okay? Um, I don't know it, how to explain it. I mean, yeah, it's like the, it's probably closer to, like, the flu shot or something than anything else that could, you know, it's not like it's... It, yeah. it's a well, barcode or something. Well, it's even better than the flu shot. You. you know, it's like way uh, flu shot's only about fifty to sixty percent effective, where the this is ninety five plus a hundred percent. All the vaccines are a hundred percent effective in protecting you from the uh, severe COVID disease. So, 
That's what I'm trying to well, tell everybody. You can't really argue with that. Yeah, everybody, take the vaccine. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Now, if one, if somebody happened to get a rare uh, reaction that nobody's heard of yet, and you, and you, um, you know, you don't make it or something, I'll still feel like I. It's good that people encourage people to take the vaccine, because look how many people have died so far. And then if you have, let, let me just say this: if the vaccine kills ten people, but it, without taking the vaccines, it, we have a million deaths. Isn't it worth it? I mean, it just, to me, it is. Uh, it yeah, sucks that, that anybody who dies. So. But, yeah. All right. Anyways, I know we went off the rails there for a second. but uh. No, but it's, <laughs> it's hard. Nobody talks about anything political without getting yeah. red in the face and pissed off and everything now. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's so annoying. So it's mm -hmm. nice to hear a sensible point of, point of view. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just called you sensible, so you wow. might want to mark that. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> but I'll let somebody <laughs> else call in. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks for calling thanks, in. Thanks, Gray. Thank you. Have a good Bye. one. Bye. Bye-bye. Chrissy! There it is. All right. Yeah. Everybody who has shots that are coming up, if you're getting the two shot for Moderna or even Pfizer, you'll be able to take the first shot. You won't hardly feel any effects from it. Maybe your arm will be sore. The second shot, though, really kicks your immune system into overdrive, and you'll have, you can actually feel like you're a little bit sick for a day or two, and then it goes away. And then two or three weeks after that, you'll feel absolutely, uh, you'll be completely protected at the levels that they tell you, okay? So just get the damn shot. Awesome, Kelly. So tomorrow you might feel a little bit uh, side effects, that kind of thing. Yeah, that, that AstraZeneca thing was bogus. They've actually kept it going. You know, if the, those com countries stopped it, they're idiots because they're having a lot more deaths than anything could have possibly happened from that. Yeah, you're probably pretty young, though, Brian. So, yeah, probably younger people don't have any effects. How did you get to have a shot, by the way? <laughs> I don't know if you're young or not. I have no clue. Your your image there looks like you're young. But you probably live in one of the states that opened it up to everybody quick. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, it's 715, you're on. Hey, how's it going? Good. Um, I'm actually quietly frozen on the screen. Oh, quietly um, frozen. I found an article in 1983, mm -hmm. the Wheatland paper this is about Stella oh, okay and I tried sending it to you once but then I'm not great with uh what paper computer was stuff it really well, newspapers.com but um where did are you so, still, um, hey don't listen to don't listen to the show just listen to your phone okay. turn, turn down the audio from the show All right. okay <laughs> hmm. okay can you hear me now yeah Okay. Um, what yeah. I understand is they did fingerprint samples, which I don't understand, because how would they know who or what ones to use? But they had a problem, and the reason it took so long to identify who is because there was a discrepancy in the blood type. Where did you find this, but That's what I was asking you, though. Was it in... Well, it was in Wheatland. Um... It was in the Wheatland town. I know, but did you, where did you, where did, no, okay, you went to an actual website called Wheatland. Her, well, it's, it's part of the um, town's newspaper, but they don't call it that anymore. They call it the reporter. Okay, but where did you go to find this? I need, I need the That's link. That's what I don't, I, um, um, 
That's why I sent you the, tried to send us. Um, where did you send it? Where, where, where did you send it to, though? I sent it to G R A Y H U Z E at gmail.com. No, there's a two. You have to put a two after that. Oh, after after Hughes, put a two. Yeah, it's G R A Y H U Z E two at gmail dot com. Oh, so for, so okay. Maybe you can forward it again. Is it an article? Oh, it's a yeah. It's a very short article. Okay, but you went to the Wheatland a website, and they had historical newspaper articles. Well. What I thought about was, uh, however I found it, <laughs> it was in WheatlandTown.com, but then I went back to WheatlandTown.com, and I can't, Wait, so and th- typed it in, and I can't, uh, uh-huh. I can't find it that way, so I don't know exactly how I found it, but it's an ar- article on here that was written Does it say her name? Years. Yeah, uh, 83 was when they identified her, so. Right, and then uh, it was. Right, 1983, and that article that was, it was written that year. Yeah. Weird. So, so the thing that, you know, you were talking about um, the killer, the thing was that kind of at, raised another question for me was uh, she was uh, she went missing from home on, on February 7th, but her husband didn't report her missing till the next day. Yeah. But it says that in the article, too? a couple too. days later. What? It says that in the article? Yeah. Okay, I thought you said it was a short article. Yep. sounds like it got into deep. I'd rather just have you send well, it, it to me so I can, like, read okay. it. Okay, I will send it to grayhues2 at gmail.com. Yeah, G-R-A-Y-H-U-Z-E-2 at gmail.com. But it'd be cool to okay. know where you, uh, you know, how you got to that. It's pretty cool that you were able to find that. Okay, I will um, go back through and see if I can... Yeah, why don't you just forward the same one that you sent, but then change the okay. person, to, yeah. you know, and then I'll read it on this very show. Just send it to me right after this, okay? Okay, I will try to do that. Like I said, I'm not that great you on can do it. If computer, you, if you, but <laughs> come obviously on. I didn't send it to the right email. Well, you can do it. If you sent it before, you just do it again. Just send it to the <laughs> <laughs> Just forward right, the I same one. I will try one. to do that. Okay, cool. All right. Awesome. All right. Thank you for taking well, my call. That's well, good that you found that, though. It's amazing. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty pretty happy I found it. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty... Uh, man, I wouldn't even have thought of looking on some random... So you went to their Wheatland website and then... like. Well, so it it um says I found it at wheatlandtown.com, mm-hmm. yeah. where the article came from. But then when I typed in wheatlandtown.com, they said he couldn't find it. So I don't know. I'll Oh, I weird. will try to send you the article again, okay? And what uh, what sit town what state do you live in? Because I have the next call is the same area code. I am from Wisconsin. Okay, so the next call is the same one. Weird. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Send, All right. Yep. But forward Thank that to you. me right now. I'll, I'll read it. Okay. Send it to me. All okay. Right. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. All right, uh, 715 again. Hello? 715. Yeah, who's this? Long time listener, first time caller. Oh, yeah? And yes, I am from Wisconsin. (laughs) Yeah, it's weird. Two in a row from Wisconsin. What are the odds, huh? Yeah. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about where I live in a a case and a couple things. Uh, I live up near the north part of Wisconsin. If I drive 60 miles north, I'd fall into Lake Superior, you know, visit the Mm -hmm. ghosts of Edmund Fitzgerald type thing, you know? Yeah. (laughs) I was actually going to do the, uh, cover the Edmund Fitzgerald at some point. I got all these documents. You know, but then I thought, yeah, it's ah, cool. It's an interesting story. You know. It is. I've, I've watched a few other YouTube videos on it and a lot of history to it. Yeah. Plus, everybody likes the song. Well, that was, that's why everybody uh, knows about it. 
really. I mean, most people know mm-hmm. it, unless you live there, probably. But everybody knows about it because of the song. Yep. Well, anyways, I live in a county that uh, there's 72 counties in Wisconsin. Yep. And the county I live in is the fifth biggest land-wise, but we have the sixth smallest population, so it's basically nobody, a large county with nobody living in it. And as far as I know, there's only been one missing person case uh, in our county, and it was never solved. Hmm. This uh, young lady, 23 years old, Marsh. Marcella Hansen disappeared in 1987 in November. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was pregnant. Uh, she was a hard worker. She had three different part-time jobs. How do, and uh, how do you spell her first name? She w- can't. What's that? How do you spell her first name? M A R C H E L L E. Um. Oh, like Marshall Hansen. H- yeah. H A N S O N or S E N. Okay. See? That's why I'm asking. <laughs> I, I know she has a name thing and she also has a re- small Reddit thread about her disappearance. Hmm. So what what do you know about it? Well, I know a little bit more than the average person. For about twenty years I carpooled with a... Price County Sheriff's Deputy uh-huh. to a uh, town 20 miles away. We'd, we'd bowl together, and I uh, he'd drive the way there, and I'd drive the way home because he liked to drink a lot when he was bowling. Oh, and yeah. he started sharing details of it with me because he was one of the first deputies assigned to this case. Oh, weird. And uh, he shared some stuff that uh, he probably shouldn't have shared because I know who the... There was three... Persons of interest in her disappearance. Is it something? And, like, uh, how many years ago was this that you talked to him? Oh, probably between 1990 and 2010. Like I said, we carpooled for 20 years. Yeah, I see her. I see her name in the Wisconsin. It's actually, let me see if this is her right here. Hold on. No. I see one that from 2013. It said, uh, I think it has a picture of her. Cat, she wore glasses. That could be an anniversary, probably an anniversary story about her disappearance or something. Mm-hmm. 25 year anniversary. Yep. yep. So what do you what do you well, know? Well, anyways, about uh, he told me who the three people of interest were, and one of them's a local fellow that was he's in prison for murder. The deputy told me he's uh, probably a serial killer, but living up here in northern Wisconsin, our coroner is usually a bar owner or something. So a couple (laughs) accidental deaths were probably, uh, you know, staged as accidental (laughs) when they were murders. Hmm. And then he got caught for killing his sister-in-law. And not only did he kill her, he cannibalized part of her. There's a, there was a book written about him. His name's John Weber. Wow. And yeah. uh, he's the per, he's the person interested in her missing person case. And then there's another guy that spent six or seven years in prison for beating up his wife. That's one of the persons of interest. And the third person, they only say there's two persons of interest usually, but there was a third person my friend told me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And he was a member of the sheriff's department. That's why it was uh, kept really quiet that he was a person of interest. Well, what, what did he explain why these people were people of interest? Well, the one is a probable serial killer, and he is known to have dated her, probably, uh, at, yeah. at a time. And also, the other guy that went to prison for seven years for beating up his wife had an affair with her. Huh. And I'm, I'm not... I don't know about the... Sheriff's office employee, but I'm assuming he might have too. I don't know, but she was 23, pregnant, and she didn't tell anybody who the father was. And they never found her, so they can't tell who the father. No, was. they haven't found her at all. Because probably the father of yeah. the kid might be the the killer. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming too. Yeah. Uh, 
or somebody, but like I said, uh, or somebody that was, yeah. Well, was she dating anybody at the time she went missing? Or? Uh, there's no information on that. Huh. All right. And and another reason it probably went cold was the sheriff at the time. He assigned a deputy to the first one to look into it and take care of the case to to look into why she was missing. He was going on vacation the next day for two weeks. God, this gonna... deputy that was assigned the case. So nobody even looked at the case hardly for the first two weeks. That's crazy. I, I, there was another case almost exactly like that. I don't remember what it was, but where they, the guy was on vacation and caused a lot of issues. Um, yeah. So nobody really looked into it much. Then they found her car parked in front of a local, it was a local bar at the time, about seven or eight miles out of town. So they don't know. And this bar has a huge, really deep lake next to it. Hmm. So <laughs> it's just a <laughs> lot of interesting stuff going on. Well, maybe what I'll do is I'll, uh, yeah, I got a, I got a folder built on it now. So maybe I'll take a look at that one. And and the last one. So Michelle Hansen, Faith Hedgepeth. Uh, this one, but you seem to know how much more, I mean, you, he probably talked to you about it a lot, so you must have a lot of different. Yeah, well, every time he'd get really drunk, he'd be sad about it because he was one of the ones assigned to the case, and, you know, they never found her, and hmm. he knew what happened that the sheriff assigned the guy that, was going on vacation to it, so nobody really looked into it for two weeks. And wow. Then when they were looking into things, one of the people that popped up was another sheriff's department employee. But he says uh, the, the person they're most interested in, oh, I forgot to tell you that part. The person, they're most, it, the person they are most interested in is that John Weber, who killed his, mm -hmm. it was his sister-in-law, and he ate part of her liver, and then he almost killed his wife. He tried to kill her, and she didn't die. That's how they figured him out for the sister-in-law's murder. Jesus. <laughs> but the the sister-in-law was murdered one year to the day that this Marcel disappeared. And they say there's no such thing as coincidence, so that's why my friend said that this John Weber is probably the nice. most, uh, you know, person of interest. Is he, he is it w, two B's or one B in that one? Uh, one B, W-E-B-E-R, yeah. That's the regular John J. John. Is he known as a well, serial, thought, they just think he's a serial killer, or? Well... My friend told me that there was at least two other people that had mysterious deaths that were involved with him. A, a fellow was found dead on the railroad tracks, and they, the coroner said it was just an accident. He might have been drunk and got hit by the train. But John Weber and him had a deal over a car, and Weber was mad because something went wrong. And my friend thinks Weber probably staged it to look like an accident. Is it John R. Weber? Well, I'm got, not sure. Well, here's the thing: is I found uh, John R. Weber, and uh, just happened to be, you know, I just typed his name in, and he lives in Wausau, Wisconsin. And it says a tape-recorded account of a teenager's torture, murder, and mutilation. That's it. Yeah, that's him. That's him. Wow. I'll put that that was the sister-in-law who was a teenager he murdered. Wow. Okay, well, I'll put that in the folder here. Yeah, it goes through this whole thing. And then you're saying, but she survived? You said somebody survived, like she was eating. His wife survived. And he ate part of her body? The one that he, he beat her up and he did a lot of things to her. He raped her with a wheelbarrow handle. Oh, Jesus. That sounds a little bit like John Miller, April Tinsley's killer. <laughs> he worked out. There was a local wheelbarrow handle. Your, your, uh, your audio is getting really crazy, like it's blinking. Can you do something? I can hardly hear you for a second. Well, I, don't, I don't know. My phone is the best. I don't have the best reception. So. Okay. We can hear you a little bit there. But, yeah, maybe, uh, hmm. 
Well, why don't you send me an email or something? Maybe we can, I can email you and, we, and you can give me a little bit more information or something like that. Sure, but the one that you found is the right one. Last I knew it was in the penitentiary in Green Bay. Man, I can hardly make out anything you just said that last time. Okay, well, I said Weber was in the prison in Green Bay. Weber's in the... I'll hang up now and I'll email you later. Okay, my email's in the description of my videos, but if you don't have it... It's yeah, I, I, I've emailed you before once about something else. So. Okay, cool. All right. Excellent. So I got it. All right, man. Okay, thanks, well, thanks. for your time. Yeah, very interesting. Thanks. Good show, always. Hey, Bye it. now. Hey, yeah, thanks. So let, let me just read this one and see what it says. A tape-recorded account of a teenager's torture, murder, and mutilation brought tears from a juror and sobs from the killer. I can't stop John R. Weber, 25, of Phillips. That's, so he was 25 here. He would have been 23 at the time that uh, Marshall went missing. Hello? Wait, what's going on? <coughs> How did you get on the, the call? You're supposed to have to wait. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Who's <laughs> this 716? Hi, it's... Yes, yeah. it is. It's Miss T again from Buffalo. How's it going? You're supposed to... Uh, it's Good. Weird. It's weird when you called in, you didn't. You weren't on hold. You're supposed to have been on hold until I unmute you. But you just sort of... I don't know. Normally, it takes forever for you to pick up. <laughs> oh, come on. I answer that sucker right away. Unless five callers call Usually, like, eight seconds. Yeah. Anyways, I've got a case for you from Buffalo. Well, actually, it's West Seneca, New York. And her name was Laisha Riley. Mm -hmm. And she went, she went missing 131-1985. She went missing from a bar here in Buffalo, where the Buffalo Bills hung out. She was last seen with a state trooper. She left with a state trooper. An what? hour later, he what? came back. Well, what's the name again? And her name was Leisha. Leisha, I'll spell it for you. Yeah. Hold on a second. Because I'm blind, so I have to feel it. <sighs> Hold on a second here. <laughs> You said it's, uh, sorry. You said January thirty <laughs> January thirty first, nineteen eighty five, right? Yes. Yeah. From what Sonica, New York. <clears throat> Last name is R E I L L Y. First name is Laisha. How do you spell it? L I E S H A. L I E E S S H A. Hey. So, Leisha, okay, got it. Yes. All right. So, she went missing from a bar here in West Seneca. She was last seen, well, the Buffalo Bill hung out at this bar, so you know how old I am. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, around 2 o'clock, she went missing from a bar. She was seen leaving with a state trooper. An hour later, the state trooper came back, but she wasn't with her, with him. The next day, she was reported missing, and he uh, called off of work. Hmm. He subsequently was fired, oh. and she still hasn't been found to this day. Yeah, so he left with her, comes back to the bar an hour later, and then he didn't return. Without. Well, without, yeah, but yeah, obviously. And then he goes, then yeah. he left... Um, I and mean, then he didn't show up to work the next day. Right. Why do you think he didn't do that? <laughs> well, I'm pretty obvious. Because well, no, I don't know. I mean, it seems like, well, look, like a, during that hour is probably when he would kill and dispose. Not showing up to work right. is stupid. He, you'd think he would have just gone to work to kind of, it's just a normal day, everybody. You know, right. missing work, well, though, <laughs> puts him out. Okay, why was he fired, though, after that? Um, well, I guess there was some kind of little investigation, very little, by the police. The thing is, is now he lives out in Lockport, New York, he's in a, and he's a head of a union. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and she still hasn't been found to this day. And it's like nobody talks about it at all. And it's she's missing. Crazy. She's missing, this person? Yep, 
She's missing since that night since she left that bar with him at so 2 o'clock. So the, the police morning. must have found out that he was with her, though, right? Oh, yeah, they know that he left with her. I mean, there's no doubt because uh, yeah. a witness has seen, seen her. So he, he left with her, and then he comes back yep. to the bar an hour later, and then he doesn't and show I, up to work the next day. So he's probably what? figuring out how to cover it up and do different things the next day. Right. And then, and then when they found. So he, he's an officer, so he knows exactly what. He needs mm -hmm. to do so that they never find her. Nope. So, yeah. Haven't found her. And, you know, there was, like, talk, you know, back then, because, like I said, you, you kind of can tell my age. <laughs> you know, there was talk about he probably ran into a dump. Now, this area at that time was, oh, geez, pretty wide open. You know, it wasn't, like, very built up in that area, except for the main roads. Besides that, it was farmland, you know, dump land. You have Lake Erie in the, in the area, too. Mm -hmm. But nobody talks about the case. And I, my heart, you know, broke for her parents. It's like, no, you know, once in a while on the TV stations, they'll say it's been 30 years, you know, or it's now 35 years or 36 years, but nobody talks about it. You know, you can't even get, if you bring it up to a cop, they don't even talk to you about it, they, you know, because most of the cops now are a lot younger. But this is a great case, you know. A great what? So, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great case if, if, oh. if we could just find her for her parents. Oh, yeah. Right. Now, the second thing I want to talk to you about, because we talked to you, you know where I'm from, Buffalo, and I, we were talking about serial killers, and we... we <laughs> And we were, where you have a, I know you don't want to bring up Delphi today, but you have two composites. Yeah. Now, in the, in the case I was talking to you here in Buffalo, there was a composite done uh, of the uh, bike past rapist. Very early on in the, in the, um, one of the rape victims he had raped. She made a composite, and as she's at a mall one day, she sees him and calls the police and say, hey, I just seen the guy who raped me, and she got the license plate number. So when the police ran the license plate number, it came back to this other guy, and this other guy swore up and down, and nobody had his car. Nobody used his car. His car was home. <clears throat> well, some other guy went to pr prison who was handicapped for like 20 years, they said he was the rapist because he looked like this composite. And that was the cop here in Buffalo, Mark Delano, I think it was. Um, after they had caught the bar, bar, bike path rapist, they went back and they looked at this and they were like, no, this guy never did any of this. This was a bike path rapist because this is pre-DNA. <clears throat> so anyways, there was composite done by the rape victim. She recognized him in a parking lot. They ran the license plate number, and this guy swore nobody had his car. But 20 years later, when they did catch him, and they went back to the cousin, and he said, yeah, my cousin's the one that used my car that night. And that's how, basically, they got him. Hmm. And, and the composite they had, um, they, they had made back then looks just like Antonio. Sanchez, not the other guy. And the other guy looked just like Antonio Sanchez. Does that make sense? Kind of. I'm sort of trying to put yeah. together what you're saying. If, I mean, if you ever brought up the, if you ever brought up this, one of the fight path like this and you really studied it and you looked at the Delphi and you look at this case, yeah. and you're going to sit there and go, holy crap. Only because this guy was like, in the middle, well, you think north. Well, you think south, that you think these cases are related to the Delphi? This case that you're talking about? No, I don't think they're related. I'm just saying some of the weird stuff is like you got these composites, and everybody's like zeroing in. It's, it's the old guy. No, it's the young guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm just saying that here's a composite of the guy. The girl sees him in a parking lot, calls the police, has to. Um, the license plate number, and this other guy says, oh, no, my car never went nowhere. Even though he knew that his cousin Man, can you hold had on? Can you car. hold on one second? Could you guys quit just talking about, like, goo-goo dolls and all the bullshit? Who cares about the goo-goo dolls? Okay, we got a guest mm -hmm. on here talking about these cases. 
it's kind of rude to just sit there and blab away over and over about a dumbass band called Goo Goo Dolls, all right? So let's just focus right. in on this. All right, cool. All right, so go ahead. No, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking to me. No, <laughs> the, the goo no. Dolls. no there's all these people who say, oh, the Goo Goo Dolls, over and over again. Like, it's interesting. It's oh, really well, those are just little trolls. I wouldn't even bother with them. Don't even look at them. Yeah, it's just over but and over I, I was again. just trying to look. My point is, is because he hit north, south, east, west. He hit mostly during the day, and that's that's what bothered me about the case. Is this guy hit during this guy hit during the day, broad daylight. Other people around, like he didn't see them, <laughs> but they some of them seen him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and I'm just saying with the composite, you know, everybody's looking at this composite, and I'm just saying because this other guy went to prison for the bike path rapist because he looked like that composite, and they made him. They made him um, the culprit. Mm. Yeah. So well, that's what I. So you, <laughs> like I said, I think if you ever read this the story on the bike path rapist and really looked at it, and you, you'd be like, "Whoa," you know. I'd be. But, what, what, what do you think? What, well, what do you think I'd be saying? I'd look at it and say, uh, "What?" I because like I, I look at him. Because, like I said, I knew who he was. Um, because he hit during the day. He worked overnight at, at uh, American Axle. Down, it's like kind of on the Buffalo area. Mm -hmm. But he always Oh, hey, hit. wait, right, wait, Buffalo? Right next to the Goo Goo Dolls? Man, they're so interesting. They're, they're one of the greatest bands in the history of the world. Yes, I know. They're no, from I'm, Buffalo. I'm, I'm just kidding. I really don't give a shit about any of that. Uh, so I know. But so, just, yeah, yeah, so yeah. You're it was I'm <laughs> just saying, this guy he had the ball because he worked overnight, and he hit during the day, early morning, uh, late morning. You know, he always, that was his time. Like, he worked overnight. <clears throat> yeah. But like I said, it's just that he had north, north of where he worked, south of where he worked, you know. Uh, where he lived in Chicktawaga, which is where a suburb of downtown Buffalo. So it's like <clears throat> he he moved in that box. He was right in the center of that box all the time. But like I said before, you know, if you knew him and you knew his family, you would have never guessed because, you know, he's involved in his church. He was involved in yeah. his kids' baseball. You know, just the nicest man, manicured lawn, nice wife. You know what I'm saying? And that's, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I'm confused. Well, he, no, but he, he just looked like a regular guy. He blended in. Yeah. Except when he was Very on, much so. Except when he was on his bike killing people. Well, no, he, he wasn't on his bike. He hit on the bike cap. Like, uh, uh, like, um. Well, what's, you know, he, what's, his, what's his name? Like, what's his, you know, what was he called? The bike path killer? He's called the bike path rapist. Killer. He killed Linda Yelm was the first killing that we knew, and that was near uh, UB okay. on the bike path. Bike path, and that was broad awesome. daylight too on a Saturday. And somebody from his work had seen him there, you know, walking around. And he put his head down and he walked by this person like he didn't even know him. <clears throat> it's just bizarre. The whole case is bizarre. It's just like they. <laughs> They tell you they're there, I mean, but you're not looking. Yeah. I mean, it's like he gave he gave himself away by being overly, I don't know what the word is, too good. Oh, yeah. You know, we all, we all have our little skeletons in our closet, but I mean, I'm just, it, this case, that case probably bothers me because, like I said, I knew who he was. It's just the idea that, you know, there is a deposit out there. It looks just like him, but only another person went to prison for him for years. And that person was let out of prison after this, um, Robert Delano. He was a detective in Buffalo. I mean, he was, he, like, fought to get that guy out of prison, knowing that he's not, he wasn't the bike path rapist. It actually was the other guy, the Mr. Nice Guy. Hmm. And that's what I'm saying. I mean, the composite look just like him. Right. Well, they probably knew. Was, they probably sort of had an idea who maybe it was. It's really rare when a composite looks just like the person. Yeah. You know? If you look at, I mean, if you look at and tell Camilo Sanchez, 
and you look at the composite, it's almost identical. What's his, what's the name of the person? Antonio. It's like A T. I can't remember E I M O. Sanchez. If you look up bike path rapist in Buffalo, it'll come up. Okay. Well, I have that. All right. All right. Well, I'll check it out. I got I got a couple, few different cases in here to look at now. Yeah, like I said, the Lee Riley one. That really is yeah. like nobody talks about it because it. It was a state trooper that was last seen with him. Mm-hmm. Then the next year he didn't show up to work, and then uh, like within a week, I guess he yeah. got fired. See, I'm not a I'm not opposed to talking about cases where there's a trooper or an officer or anything like that. I'm not, you know, whatever the facts yeah. are are the facts, right? I just hate when people right. immediately go, "Oh, it's a cop," you know, like their first instinct is to blame it on a cop because they they right. are whack job anti cop people. There's so many of those oh, people. I'm not, walk, because my I'm not, well, I'm not saying you're. I'm not saying you're one. I'm talking about these people <laughs> online. <laughs> they're so anti-cop that every single case that shows up is a. Oh man, I wonder if it was an officer. It's so rare, everybody. It's really rare. Okay, so the thing is, is how about let the evidence point to a cop instead of saying right. it's a cop right off the bat? It's it's stupid. Okay. Right, and that's right. one thing I'm not an anti-cop because I have police. <laughs> my family and firemen. So, <clears throat> being in New York, uh, just about if your family's been around a long time, your family members are part of the team, as I call them. Yeah. But um, I also, you still having time for another case? No, I don't have time. I got this another one. caller coming in. Okay. Well, you, you got um, two in. I'm you got two in. <laughs> bothering you. But well, you're not, you're not bothering me. Well, you're not bothering me. I just somebody else called, and I don't want to go uh, let him make. I think they're on again. Right. How are they coming into the... This oh. is crazy. All right. See you later. Hey, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Uh, Selena is on. Hello. Who's Hello. This? Yep. Hello. Who's this? Hi, Gray. It's uh, Lenny. Oh, yeah? Are you from... Hi, uh, you sound Australian. <laughs> a UK, UK actually. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Australia. Oh, there you go. Now, you, there you go. Now I, I can hear the other. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Um, I'm, I'm a little bit late to the uh, live, which I do apologise. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just want to say how amazing you really do with all your cases. Oh, thank you. No, honestly, it's absolutely it's the best thing I've ever seen on YouTube whatsoever. You you're amazing with all your work with the maps, everything. Well, thanks. Yeah, it seems like the maps help out figure out a um, like what's going on actually in the case because you can see the locations and everything. Oh, definitely. It it brings us in. Do you know it's it's like um the CSI the series. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't know if it's Literally, quite like that. it makes me feel like I'm a little crime crime fighter myself. <laughs> yeah. And I just wanna I just want you to know that we all appreciate you. Well thanks. I was trying to do an earlier show to catch some UK people. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like seven or eight yeah. hours ahead, so it's either midnight twelve forty six or eleven forty six or one forty six over there. No, yeah. exactly. We're absolutely honored, honestly, mate. Um for the time that you've you've done now it's perfect yeah cool maybe i'll try to do more of those on a weekend or something <laughs> during the week i can't really do it because i i you know i work and then i go straight to you know i gotta do research sometimes during the day and then i get it all together to try to get a show together you know? no exactly i just want to i just want to speak for everyone that we we appreciate you gray awesome you're not going to talk about the uh, the goo goo dolls I, I've missed the Goo Goo Dolls. What's the Goo Goo Dolls? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I. I guess they're a band. It was a really big topic oh. though in chat for a while there. I think I'm a little. I, I might be a little bit old for the band then. <laughs> yeah, me too. I've never even heard of them. So. Me neither. It, yeah. I guess we're Goo just Goo not. Sounds... We're just not cool. I guess is what. <laughs> we're not cool anymore, Gray. Goo Goo sounds voodoo. <laughs> That's right. It does. It does sound like voodoo. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I thought I'd, I'd just just pop in a little bit. Um, yeah, thank you. Hey, well, thanks for calling in. And uh, we try to cover some cases sometimes in the UK, but it seems like the I, coverage of it kind of takes a while. 
Like they, they yeah. don't really give you the exact information right off the bat. I yeah, I, I watched recently about the um, Sarah Everard yeah. um, case. It yeah, and honestly, it, it's crazy up here at the moment. There's riots. Um, that doesn't make everything. Any, I don't really. That doesn't make any sense. It's uh, it, you have one psycho cop, and then all of a sudden, oh, we we missed out on our uh, anti-cop protests, so we got to find. Oh, here's a good one. Let's do it on this case. I don't yeah. even understand it, it at all. It, it, it literally is. If it for for being a woman, it's embarrassing. Um, just for the fact because they're using it as an excuse to riot. Yeah. More than anything. Yeah, no, it's. I just like I couldn't believe it when I was listening to what they were saying and everything. I couldn't it, believe what I was seeing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't see it. Yeah. But I can. I just saw like reports and people talking on the camera about why they're protesting, and I was just yeah, thinking, man, was... you, you guys were caught up in the same bull crap that we had over here the yeah. entire summer. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think since since the pandemic, everyone's just gone crazy, more never. Yeah, and they use they using anything as an excuse now. Yep, like you're right. Yeah, just to start a little riot. Yeah, but I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry if I've gone off topic. <laughs> no, I'm watching uh, one a. Uh, I watched the first season, but it was so long ago that I'm watching it again. Something like C. B. Reich or Riker or something like that, or so a, a crime drama. It's yeah, you know, yeah. I think it's in the U. K. There, I can't remember I, what it's called. Like C. B. Yeah, C. B. Riker or something. Does that sound right? Uh, I, I don't watch a lot of telly. I end up working. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't watch anything in the evening? Like your crime? You guys have some of the best I, I watch crime. I <laughs> Okay. Well, I, I, yeah, well, listen. I watch these shows at uh, 1230 in the morning. <laughs> okay. And, oh, and, 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 and I finally fall asleep at 2 because I do the show almost every night till midnight, it seems like. Sometimes earlier. But, you know, and then I, I don't. It's hard to wind down and go right to bed right after the show, right? So if I'm done at 1030... I might goof around, you know, get stuff done on the computer and stuff till midnight. Then I oh, go definitely. To, then I go to sleep, and then it takes me an hour and a half, two hours of just blindly staring at the screen. Then I go, I pass out. <laughs> <laughs> I could have gone to sleep no, earlier, I, but I like it. It's sort of this fun. I like. I having, know what you mean. Yeah, a wind down time <laughs> just for me, you know. <laughs> yeah, half an hour on winding up being four hours. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fantastic! You have a good night, though, Greg. Oh, wait, you too. Hey, thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. I was reading. Somebody just said I was really rude. I don't think we had a rude call here at all. Do you know what? If you're rude, Gray, yeah. you're so mean. Well, this idiot just <laughs> typed in because they they realized that they just wanted to keep talking about the Goo Goo Dolls, and it was um, Angela said Gray is just too damn rude and got out of here. Oh no, mean. Go to jail. <laughs> Yes, right. I'm going to jail right now. No, don't go to jail. I'm in jail. Oh, darn it. I'm in jail now. Oh, no. Can <laughs> someone help Gray? He's in jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what it is. I, I put it so I allowed people to unmute themselves. I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> there we go. No, honestly, just I, all I wanted to do is just let you know you're doing an amazing job, Gray. Keep it up. We're all proud of you. Well, thank just you. Keep doing what you're doing. Well, I really appreciate it. Thanks for calling me in from so far away. Not a problem. <laughs> and, yeah, you'll probably see me in the chat. I'm Lenny. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I saw you earlier. Thank you. Appreciate it. Lenny with an IE. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not Lenny. You know, like, hey, not I'm Lenny. Lenny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, honestly, thanks, Gray. You're a legend. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey, uh, it's too bad, Angela. That's just the way I am, okay? If I'm reading about 75 comments in the chat that uh, um, when we have a caller on, and I can't tell anything about it, and then I, it turns out it's about a band. Just because the lady happened to mention Buffalo. Well, then, of course, at that point, it's not going to work out too well. <laughs> All right. No, you got... Uh, Sarah Beth Colagras, Chrissy, Rita Schaefer, Jamie Harold, 
Paulette Leonard, and Zozo. All right, I can get the hell out of here then. Bye. Oh, and there's Sabina. <laughs> All right, I'm out of jail now. All right, I'll turn that back on now. <laughs> oh, that's good. Look at Paulette use one of um, uh, Casp uh, Dadio Caspian Horses Rocks emojis. Is that a, is that crying or laughing hard though? I can't tell. It's got kind of a sad eyebrow mixture there. Yeah, I'll, I'll unhide Angela. She seems like a good sport. Uh, but I am assuming that Angela is a, a female. I know that in this day and age, um, that's I'm sorry for that assumption. All right, let me. I got uh, somebody right here. All right, Nick Graziano, you can um, unhide your. Unmute yourself. What's going on, Nick? There we go. Hey, right. thank you for having me, Gray. Uh, yeah. Even I've yeah, been hearing you've been calling in a bunch of different talk shows. You know, people that yeah. copy my show and do the same calling type stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Well, I was just, uh, I was wondering if, if you've ever looked into the, the Keddy Cabin murders. Yeah, I think I have actually done that. Let me think. How do you spell that? K-E-D. Are you still there? Hello? Oh, wait, you got, you muted yourself again. You have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry. I, it's loud back here. If it gets loud, just tell me. I'll keep it unmuted. Yeah, I think I did do that one night. Okay, yeah, it's the K-E-D-D-I-E. -D -D -E, yeah. The 81. Let's see. Oh, maybe it's not. Really, it's the 1981, the one you're talking about? Yeah, Katie, California, the, the Sharp family, the single mother, the five kids, and then... Is that the one where one of the kids was still alive and he went outside and then he got... Chase back in. Doesn't right, yeah. There's there's yeah. three kids, but one of them is the main one who apparently witnessed stuff. Mm -hmm. There was the three in the back room, I guess. I guess yeah, I guess they survived. That they did the hypnosis to try to get them to mm -hmm. remember. I'll have to I'll have to look into the hypnosis thing. Because uh, I'm not I'm not really a big believer in it, but um, you know, I asked somebody that's actually in the field, and she said, well. It's more, she kind of explained it a certain way. It's more like this deep relaxation thing where your mind can sort of, you know, I think the word hypnotize is the, the, the issue. They should call it something else, you know, because whenever you right. hear the word hypnotize, it, you sound like you start thinking about some kind of a zombie walking with their arms sticking out and doing whatever the person says. Yeah. Exactly. I've heard it like if, if you ever are walking around your house and you just, find yourself in the bathroom and you're like oh shit how did i get here that's like the same thing i heard like, yeah you no, know, no yeah that's exactly what she said she said have you ever been looking around for your glasses and they were right on on your face and i said yeah i've actually said that on my <laughs> show uh but yeah she <laughs> um i actually have done that before and she was saying it's sort of like that you're in this other you're kind of on autopilot almost Right, and then t for to be like a little kid, it's got to add another element because he's probably not mature or whatever to yeah. get to that. I don't know, but the th I I was gonna ask you the because when you were talking earlier, like I'm one of those guys who I don't really go after law enforcement or one of those theory guys, but this looks like really bad from law enforcement. I think in the kitty, like, uh, that 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 case. Yeah, in this case. Yeah. Apparently there was a there was a call the one of the girls who was murdered she was missing at first and she was found her skull was found mm. um, 
and it was found because an anonymous caller tipped it in and that an anonymous call the tape was in an, an unopened envelope in the bottom of the desk for like 20 years or something like that yeah huh so what I don't know if I've actually talked about it on the show but it definitely sounds like something I've seen before okay yeah I thought that I know you don't cover stuff that's really widely covered but I think that's no one of the ones that I've seen that one before hasn't that one been covered by a lot of people or yeah, it is, but there's no general consensus. Like, there's just a whole bunch of crazy shit going on. Yeah. It's, I feel like you would cover it really good if, if you did. Yeah, maybe I'll take a look at it. Let me let me type it, put a folder in there. Do you know when that was? And what, spell that again. Was it K-E? Yeah, K-E-D-D-I-E. Yeah, and then Cabin Murders. Yeah. And it was like 1980. 81, yep. 1981, okay. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, can I ask you a question about Brandon Lawson, the other case, too? Yeah. yeah. Did you have, uh, I heard rumors that his phone was pinged, like, wh do you, do you know, like, does it feel like he went a certain direction, even? Do we know? Uh, well, I remember there was a, the phone pinged by a, a river. And I don't remember. Let me let me go there really quick. I think I actually marked that down. Okay, I heard a rest stop, but that was I, I never read or. That heard was just any. well. The rest stop was just sort of a general um, location of where his car was. It's not like a. Um, let me find it. Okay. And yeah, that's really. It. I wanted to know because if I, c I'm. My two theories that I'm caught is if a stranger picked him up and maybe like kicked him out down the road or something if he was acting weird, or if uh, if somebody knows that's close to him, if somebody just knows what happened. Yeah, it's weird. I can't even. I think it's right here. Hold on a second. No, that's not it. It's in Texas. Um, all of a sudden, Party I can't city. find that folder that I have. It's weird. Brandon. It's Abilene and Bronte. Between those two places. Yeah, and people said, no, he's saying he's out here in Abilene and Bronte. You know, he said Abilene, but never said. Bron people said he's saying the Bront side. You know, and so, oh, no. He n oh, so he didn't say the Bront side? No, no. no, no oh, okay, that's what. I don't know why I hear that. On the. I don't hear that. On the at Bront all. side? Well, because well, people were saying that. That's why people think that he said that. Yeah, uh, suggestion. Yeah, because you, know, you probably, I mean, people said they heard that. It's just like EVP reading or uh, faces in the clouds, all that kind of stuff. You know, people see what somebody else told them, and then now that's the only thing they, they can see. But you wonder what they would have heard had you just listened to it uh, without any reading prior. That's what I, I value that better than somebody when they read it, uh, what they thought the text was, and then... Uh, right. Huh. Do you come across much cases like that, where you get kind of before pe other people do, and you get to see it? Yeah, I, I don't ever really look at anything that somebody else uh, did. Yeah. Man, I must have accidentally deleted the that whole entire folder. That's wild. Oh, you probably got a backup somewhere. So. Hmm. Not maybe not now, but probably got it saved somewhere. Yeah, I can't even find Brandon in Google Earth. That's weird. But hey, look at look at everybody. You can now see this is what the case map looks like for my entire thing. Isn't that wild? <laughs> Damn. So look at that. Look at how many look how many pins that is. You need to get some in the South Dakota. What do you do? One. Well, no, I'm just saying that's where you need to move. People need to move right Oh, <laughs> Look at, look at, like, just move right here, everybody. You're absolutely <laughs> safe at this point, okay? Because it's that's not like me choosing something. That's just kind of how it is. There isn't really that many cases around in some of these areas. Yeah, that looks like the sweet spot. Yeah. So. All right, Gray. Yeah, thank you for letting me call in. I just wanted to... I, I really would think you would be like great to do this. I, there's so much crazy stuff on Ketty. It would be cool to see you do it if you ever thought about okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I've got the folder here. I've got like five folders from today. So 
Today was a good uh, sort of a uh, brainstorming for new cases to look at. Hell yeah. All right. Thank you, man. I have have a good day. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for calling in. Bye. That's uh, Nick Graziano. So who was it that called before? Um, you know, then then the call came in, then Lenny came called in. I forgot her name. Are you out there? Wow, Angela, you're back. After I was so rude, you said, amazing. <laughs> I already said Lenny. Who was the one that... Hey, Brittany. Uh, did you hear what I said? I said the person who called in before Lenny. It was uh, the lady. She had the, the case about uh, Brooke, uh, New York. Buffalo, remember? That was Jackie. Okay. Well, thanks for calling in, Jackie. Oh, Jackie Kerr, that's right. Yeah. yeah, that's not how you spell genius. You know, I knew this comedian that once said, Hey, man, the J stands for genius. He goes, My name is Floyd J. Phillips. The J stands for genius. <laughs> that's pretty good. You got to admit, right? My name is Floyd J. Phillips. I thought I was rude, Angela. You just said a minute ago that I was really rude. Okay. Don't you think it's even more rude, though, to be... I don't really care. Yeah. I, here's the thing. is, I was trying to understand what you guys were talking about. Oh, I thought you were being legit. The... Uh, now, you got to put smiley faces, Angela, or nobody would know what you were talking about because we get trolls that say exactly what you just said yeah but you have to have a little bit of a smiley face or something where did Chrissy Paradis go there she is she said I was so mean <laughs> Ray, you're so mean <laughs> Yeah, so maybe I will take a look at that case at some point. I got five of them now. We'll be we'll be hitting on those pretty soon. I wanted to look at that one though that Jackie brought up here. I think it was her. No. Now I can't even remember. Who called in about the no, the guy called in. Prior, he called in about. Oh wait, hold on. God, I got a lot of stuff I got to do right now. So I just got that email that I was, that was um, going to be sent to me. So hold on a second. From uh, quietly frozen, sent me the email, and now we can take a look at the this document here. Okay, the headless something body, headless nude body of a woman found near Wheatland. This is uh, is. Let's see, Stella McLean, McLean, but it says Mick and then L-E-A-N. The headless nude body of a woman found near Wheatland five years ago has been positively identified by law enforcement officers and a former Gehring, Nebraska elementary, as is what it's supposed to say, a former Gehring, Nebraska elementary school teacher. Yeah, but I bet it would be fun in, in a pub. <laughs> it's fun. It, I mean, I always have a good time. Let's uh, okay. A spokesman for Nebraska State Patrol in Scotland, Nebraska, identified the woman as 45-year-old Stella McLean. He said McLean died of an apparent homicide, and the identification of her body was reopen has reopened the investigation into the case. So. That's funny because that's exactly why I thought it'd be good to identify her because that would lead to an investigation because she was obviously murdered. Miss McLean's body was discovered April 15, 1978 near the banks of the South Laramie River. All right, let's see. Now let's see if we can uh, find that one. Hmm. 
Hold on. Doom, doom, doom. I'm going to turn less of these on now. Alright. So that's Wheatland. I can't remember exactly where her body was at. Alright, so let's, let me just read through this. The body was re reported to have been lying face down and decomposed had already begun, a decomposition had already begun, including the area of the hands, making identification difficult. The Wyoming State Lab finally made a positive identification by matching fingerprint samples with those taken from the body. The identification took so, so long, a spokesman said, because of the discrepancy in blood type. Well, I mean, what about the finger? If you did it with fingerprints, wouldn't you? Uh, let's see. McLean disappeared from her Garing home on the night of February 7th, 1978. Hmm, that's crazy. So what date did I have on the, on that map? Yeah, that's the Jane Doe there. So I bet it was right around in this area, now that I think about it. Because I had it ending there, but they said it's near the river. So I bet you it's right there. Let's move that. I bet you anything, that's it. And they said it was on the, uh, so she was an actual school teacher from Nebraska. On the banks of the South Laramie River. So let's see if that's what river that is. South Laramie River. Okay, well that's definitely the South Laramie because that's South Laramie Road and it's right here. South Laramie River. Oh yeah, <laughs> well look at that. Well that goes right down there. So that's the South Laramie River Road. This is going to be Laramie River. That's West Laramie River Road. That's uh, probably just right there. I bet the person just drove by, dumped her body right off the side there. McLean disappeared from her Garing home on the night of February 7, 1978. And they found that Jane Doe on April 15th. So maybe. February would have preserved her body for a while, so it just started decomposing, especially in Wyoming, right around the time she was found. So she was probably almost perfectly preserved for a while at that point. Her husband, Tom, reported her missing the following day, and local law enforcement officials investigated the disappearance. Her car was discovered a couple days later in the parking lot of Grampy's Pancake House and restaurant in Scott's Bluff. Man, I wonder if that's still there. Let's see. That sounds like a name that might still be around. Grampy's Pancake House and Grand no, Scott's Bluff. Now, that was 1978. Darn it, I was hoping, probably now it's something else, but let's see where Grand's. I bet you anything, she was sitting there and met somebody right then. Uh, 
Scott's Bluff. Yeah, Scott's Bluff, Nebraska. So that's not even far away. Look at that. That's only 70 miles away. These are all the different pancake places. Yep. Yeah. Nope. Alright, so I'll just keep getting reading this for you guys. You guys know this one that I'm talking about, right? The Headless Body in Wyoming. Her car was discovered a couple days later in the parking lot of Grampy's Pancake House. Jim K. Lawson, a chief deputy for administrative services at the Scotts Bluff County Sheriff's Department, said last Friday, due to recent developments by Wyoming authorities, the scope of the investigation has widened and intensified. We have never considered the case closed, Lawson said. This is way back then. Lawson said the sheriff's department never ruled out foul play in the case. McLean's body had been interred in the Wheatland Cemetery. That's exactly, I knew that it was in that cemetery. That's the funeral home that I called. Still visibly disturbed by the experience. This is back in 1978. Platt County Sheriff Einer Mickelson said no further information as to the identity of of the nude, white, decapitated female body found at 1.30 p.m. April 15th, about two miles north of Wheatland, had been established. Hmm. So, apparently, though, they tied him to the, uh, you know, a serial killer. Uh, what was his name again? Something Wayne, something, you know. I always forget his name because he's, he's not even a serial killer. I, I don't think that guy's killed anybody. Other than maybe his mom. Oh, he killed his mom? Shit, let's tie him to every serial killing in the United States and people would believe it. He's... Well, thanks, Karen. Yeah. Yeah, Henry Lee Lucas. There you go. Yeah, Henry Lee Lucas. All right. Go watch the documentary on that and see if you would even believe that he killed anybody. All right. See if you can find that. But anyways, I am going to get out of here at this point. Um, I might come back. This depends on how long this family, we're doing a family Zoom deal. So however long that is, you know, I might come back on, do something. I don't know. <laughs> so anyways, I appreciate you guys coming on. All right. We still were able to get in two hours and 25 minutes. Thanks for everybody who called in. I appreciate it. I should probably write down everybody's name, but sometimes I don't do it. I hope you guys had a, at least thought it was mildly interesting. Had some decent information, callers, that kind of thing. Sorry for um, not understanding your sarcasm, Angela. Glad, you, uh, glad I unblocked you and you came back and explained that. But what you said was exactly what trolls say every single time when they come in. And, uh, you know, talking about the... Uh, was it go... I almost said boo-boo, but it was go-go. Goo-goo. Right. Yeah, I'm, I was ju I'm just flipping you guys crap. It, they, it was the sheer amount of time it kept being discussed is when, when I jumped in there. I don't care if you bring it up. Oh, yeah, that's where the band's from. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like them too. Great. Hey, you know, I went to one of their concerts last year. Oh, and this guy came up to me and he sold me some, uh, you know, some jewelry. Oh, and then, you know, it just goes on and on and on. It's like, what does that have to do with anything? All right. Yes. All right, Cindy Lean. All right, everybody. Thank you all for showing up. Make sure you wash your hands, maintain your social distancing, wear a mask, and I recommend 
uh, getting the vaccine. If you don't want to get the vaccine, do not try to convince another soul not to. Just do what you are going to do, but don't try to sell it to anybody else. Now, people who are trying to get people to take vaccines, do it as often as possible, because that is what needs to be done. But if you don't want to, don't try to sell that to somebody else. Okay? Uh, just tell them, yeah, I'm not going to do it. That's it. All right. Hopefully you don't say that, though, because I want all of you to live. All right. So thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. And we will see you guys a little bit later. Maybe maybe tonight. Maybe not. But if not, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. And until next time, everybody, be safe out there. And a two and a three. Thanks, Angela Vincent. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while now. And during this whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector, like rejecter. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector, and I'm always gonna oh, be and a hey, protector. Yeah, thanks for getting that Pooled quietly flector. frozen. Interceptor. And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector on his pector with all respect, y'all. Just remember, I've a temple for conjecture. I have no agenda. I'm no pretender. And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send ya on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. Talk to you. Oh, yeah, and, uh... Let's see, Mag sent me a PayPal last night. Thank you very much. I have a, uh, I think that must be Lenny, uh, Patreon, I think. I don't know. It's Sabina, it says here, but I thought that's what it said. <laughs> I don't know. It said that on the screen, too. But anyways, thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. See if I miss anything else. All right. That's it. Got some emails to look at. So anyways, thank you guys very much. And we will talk to you later. Be safe out there.
Be safe out there.